All right, everyone. You brought the hype, and now it's time for Flynn to run Mega Man X4X 100%. Good luck. Have fun. Yeah, hello, everybody. I am Flynn, but my full, the full name is Flannels, but don't worry about that. Just call me Flynn. It's a lot easier. We'll be running X4. A really fun game. It was the first. It was my first speed game, as it turns out. First, first category I learned. Really fun time. And I'm joined here by Tempest, who, who uh, provided comms for the previous Extreme Two run. Really good run, by the way. Really fun, Tempest. Absolutely. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Told you you couldn't get rid of me that easily. Uh, yeah, I also speed run this game. Uh, I'm also a mainly X-focused runner. And yeah, this is this is a solid, solid game. And uh, uh, we're also uh, we also got a third comment or second commentator rather in a, a good friend of both of us, Wolf Shadow. Hi, uh, my name is Wolf Shadow. I am, I guess, resident X fangirl. <laughs> so uh I have been known to say that X is my robo husband don't want a mic before, so let me just get that out of the way. <laughs> Respect. Respect. So this is the X X 100%. That means we're going to be playing as Mega Man X and collecting everything. That means all hard tanks, sub tanks, and armor capsules. So that should be pretty fun. And we're going to be starting, not wasting any more time, in 3, 2 1, go. All right, cops. All right. Take it away. Um, Good luck. So, like I said with Extreme 2, it's funny how we go from that game to this one because they both correlate chronologically. And so, where we just managed to solve the Soul Erasure crisis on Lagoo's Island, Iris has since been working back at the Repl Force with her brother, the Colonel, and things have been peaceful for a while until now here we are at the floating man-made city of Sky Lagoon. And so, X has been called to take care of a Maverick situation with this big dragon called Eresian, and that'll be our intro boss for later. For now, let's talk about the gameplay and how things differ between this and the Super Nintendo titles. The physics are a bit more mobile. X can now engage in dash jumps without having to start from a ground dash. And this is actually really good because in holding the jump button, or rather holding the dash button leading into a jump, that's how Flynn will focus his main movement forward because there is a bit of a nerf in the grounded dash where you have a few frames of startup before X starts to move. Now, because it's just a few frames, normally that might not sound all too bad. However, it will eventually add up if you do too many reliances on the ground dashes. Aside from that, similar to sister game Mega Man 8 for the same play console PlayStation 1, X has two buttons for attacking. One is the dedicated buster button, and the other will serve as the buster, but also as our special weapon once we start to get those from the Mavericks. Now, here we are going into a region. This is personally my favorite intro boss of the entire X franchise with a banger theme to suit, and also very reminiscent of the Mecha Dragon from X2. You're going to see Flynn rail on this guy with a bunch of half-charge shots, because once the charging begins, he can already use the half-charge shot to deal just as much quick damage, because while the charge shot is the stronger of the suit, half-charge shots will still deal more damage to the bosses, and it's a bit more reliable to deal damage to a region this way. So, there was a pretty good fight, of course, we tried to manip manipulate his movement so that he does not fly to the other side as fast as possible, but more often than not, he's just going to do it no matter what. And here we have Colonel. Fun fact, I was first introduced to this guy through his Battle Network counterpart. I had no idea how different this one was going to be. <laughs> You're not getting game audio on OBS. Okay. Uh... Oh, I know. Hmm. That's a bit strange. Uh, Tech, let us know when we are good to go. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah, we can we can hear it. I guess, too, while we wait on them to figure that out, just in the manga, oh my gosh.
Alright, that should be good now. We're good? Okay. I see chat saying that we have sound, it looks like. Alrighty. So let me All talk right, so let me chime in to talk about the route here. Since this is X 100 percent and X and the way X4 is laid out, the 100 percent route with them is pretty set in stone. So our first boss that we're gonna be going is Magma Dragoon, because his weapon is gonna be uh essential to getting the uh to getting other items and prevent stage repeats. That's a, and that's our main issue here. With the route at least. This is probably one of the few runs that I see where you actually go and get the fourth armor versus like ultimate. <laughs> yeah, well ultimate armor is a run in the game's leaderboard, but we have that as a miscellaneous category. And the reason for that is because unlike X5, the sequel, this has it where it was the introduction to the ultimate armor. However, you had to input a bit of a code on the character select screen in order to get it. And so because it's not quite in line with the traditional any percent or 100 percent, we just have it a bit separately. It is a very fun category, though, as somebody who does run that. And also, mwah, chef's kiss on the ultimate armor design. Fun fact, I Absolutely. Had, I had world record with ultimate armor for a little bit. So that's oh, cool. sick. Let's go. But yeah, so you're noticing in this stage that we've just entered one of two types of ride armors. The ride armor in this game is a bit interesting in that the grounded version replaces the punch for a energy sword. And also, Flynn could have opted to carry it into the boss arena. However, it is a bit on the slower side of things. So while it is necessary to avoid insta-death to the lava, it, we, we do ditch it, as you saw right there. It can be used for safety, though. So... The option is there, it's just that leaving it in the lava makes it dangerous to get into. But yeah, here's Dragoon, a very Akuma-inspired character, so a lot of Street Fighter reminiscent moves with his Hadouken and Shoryuken, but also a few fire-breathing moves, and also the fastest iframes among all the Mavericks, which is why we can just quickly hit him with all of those half-charged shots and get him down. It's a very simple boss fight for that reason, but you also want to be very considerate of how much damage he can deal to you, because he can also be a bit of a beginner's trap in that way, so... Yeah, a very good fight, and also, you did notice that we saw him in Sky Lagoon. He mentions that he was the one that disrupted the core and caused the whole floating city to crash down and caused that massacre at the beginning. So, we did get our revenge on him for also betraying us Maverick Hunters. The uh, stage start screen mentions Irregular Hunters. This is a translation translation issue, excuse my stutter, for uh, the Japanese Maverick Hunter terminology, which they do call them Irregular Hunters, so because Capcom never had to change that in any of the others, they probably forgot to do it here. And now we have Web Spider's stage. This is a very beautiful level and a very uh, casually starter-friendly choice. It's also possible to kick things off here if you wish to, such as with some of the other runs, but again, because we want to complete the levels with little to no revisits as possible, going to Dragoon is not only the, pro the uh, smart choice for a first selection, but also, like, just not only getting the boss out of the way, but we do need his rising fire weapon in order to get a life up from something that can only be burned away by it, so... Uh, unfortunately, we do have to make one revisit later on, and ironically, that is Dragoon's stage, because you might have seen some blocks that seem to be in the way of what otherwise looked like a platform Flynn could have gotten to, and that requires the Buster upgrade to use a fully charged Twin Slasher from Slash Beast, so... We'll be back later, but yeah, one of the consequences of what is otherwise the most optimal route of 100% for X. That was some very clean jumping up the ladders too, by the way. Yeah, that, yeah, the that waterfall vertical climb is mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, it can be hard to get down. It's no shame to any runner trying to pick up this game that you know, uh, sometimes might get a little bit stuck there, and it's not necessarily your fault. But other than that, you know, we're basically going through. So, Flynn did pick up the leg parts. One of the biggest differences between this and any percent for X is that the top runner, Dante SC Weave 1, opts not to get those leg parts, and this is fairly understandable. 
The leg parts, similar to Extreme 2, gives X an air dash, but when he presses the jump button while not in the middle of a dash or what have you, he can hover for a bit. And sometimes you can accidentally activate that, so chances are you might lose a little bit of time if you're not too careful with your jump inputs. So, again, not only does skipping that, uh, not only does uh, skipping that potentially save you the trouble of that, but there's also another optimization that Dante goes for that is also a little less beginner friendly, but we'll talk about that when we cross that road. For now, Web Spider is easily the jerk of the Mavericks, and for good reason. You notice him going in and out of the ceiling. However, we did learn that when he just about leaves the screen, it is possible to damage him while he's away if you have a good aimed charge shot. So something we try to do is hit him in between moments of uh, iframes in that regard. That's a very clean fight, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we, uh, we've defeated Spider and we've cleared the situation from the jungle, which he was hiding that secret cannon weapon in the background. Nice little attention to detail from Capcom's part for a small element of storytelling. And we just got the lightning. I web. believe that I believe that's also part of the canon that they use in X5, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, is that the Enigma? Interesting. If I that think is the case. So. Ooh. Could be. Well, I'll definitely have to be some uh, looking into at some point during my free time. But for now, we get into our avian, the aviator, avian, take your pick, Maverick. Storm Owl, not to be confused with Storm Eagle. Uh, yeah, we're in an airship armada. This is actually a pretty popular stage, and I love this aesthetic. But I also feel like, oddly enough, X4 is one of those things where you start to see a bit of a level design decline in that I feel as though, while the levels are perfectly serviceable here, I feel like the bosses are personally better. That's just a personal opinion. You're welcome to uh, give me your thoughts. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It feels as though the other games before it certainly had a bit more to offer in terms of how you traverse levels. This one at least has the flying ride armor, which I should briefly talk about. You notice that Flynn was holding a charge shot for it while trying to keep in the air. If he was grounded when the charge shot animation has its prep phase going, then the ride armor loses its ability to move. Ooh, that was close. Nicely done. It's also close there. Oh boy! Oh <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, I was scared well, for a second! Me too, well, because I got the... Like... I got that, that health talent worth mentioning. If you... When you uh, take damage and you get a, a health thing, the game freezes. And that can mess up your input. Oof. Yeah, oh, well, no. you want to quickly explain what Flynn just did there to get the buster upgrade? Uh, so yeah, he used the lightning web, which uh, allows X to have a little bit of a platform to jump off of to avoid the spikes, and then get up there to get that uh, upgrade part. So, very clean. It's also worth noting that there are two Buster upgrade capsules. The one that he got was the stock shot. He can also get the plasma shot, and it's completely interchangeable so long as you keep returning to the stage to do so. The reason we don't get that is because the continuous damage that the charge shot of the plasma buster's lingering effect, it's it, it doesn't really do much for us. Whereas in the stock buster, you can hold up to four charge shots, and the charge process is very convenient, because you notice that when the charging begins, if Flynn does not have any stocked up stuff, he immediately gets two shots to start with. And because it just deals more general damage, it is easily the go-to piece. In the ultimate armor run, however, we are stuck with the Plasma Buster by default. And also Storm Owl is probably just as good of a contender for the Jerk Boss when it comes to his moves. One trick that Flynn could have went for is what we call a Shield Break. You notice that the green shield of wind around him is how his iframes activate. And so if there was a point where he got it in just the right frame and landed any kind of attack, then he could have gotten some extra damage in on Storm Owl. It's not the easiest to get through, though, and it's a bit tolerable once you take on the boss rush. So, yeah, not, me, not surprising that we didn't quite see it. Everything Owl did, completely random. Oh, yeah, that too. And not to mention that his desperation move is just as annoying to deal with. 
So that was a life up right there. Some people might forget that even exists, and I don't blame you. You literally have to look up just to make sure you don't miss it. Aside from that, this is also a pretty cool stage, no pun intended, where we saw in the very start Blizzard Buffalo from X3 all encased in ice. There's one other boss that we'll be seeing when we get to the mini boss here, but right now Flynn is collecting the EX tank, so if Flynn gets a game over and has to start uh, from the beginning of a area of a level, uh, from that point on, X will now have four instead of two lives in the counter, so a total of five lives in actuality. It's and there's Joe Penguin. Oh yeah, Joe there's Penguin. Joe Penguin. So, welcome to everyone's favorite <laughs> mini-boss. This is RNG Hack, because this guy decides what attack he wants to use when he gets hit, and the one we want to see is the one that causes his iframes to linger longer before he makes a charge. And, as you can and see, that I got none of that. was... <laughs> I think that was it at the last hit, actually. At the last hit, yes. That, that was Master Hand before Master Hand. <laughs> I had much. to think about that for a second, ago, Josh. So, welcome <laughs> to... Brain was like... <laughs> I'm sorry, my brain was like... Wait, wait, Smash did come out after X4, right? Because I was, I was playing this in the role play from. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, no, you're, you're all good. So, this is Area 2 of Frost Walrus. A rare instance of the stage theme entirely changing up between areas. And yeah, uh, like I said, this game is practically sister games with Mega Man 8 in more ways than one. The most obvious case that a lot of people think of also has to do with the version Flynn is playing, the English version. Both dub casts were the same people, recorded all within a single session, as confirmed by X's voice Ruth Shiraishi, who also doubled as classic Mega Man in Mega Man 8. So, this game is a little bit notorious for its dub cutscenes, but also well, well regarded for it as well if you play a certain Red Maverick Zero. So, welcome to Frost Walrus. Shoutouts to Frost Walrus. And this guy will be weak to fire, you know, the whole... It's not a Mega Man game if we don't get confused as to whether the, the fire boss is weak to the ice or the ice boss is weak to the fire. But yeah, you saw that he got knocked back when we used Rising Upper on him and then proceeded to do a charge while he had yet to reach halfway at health. The way Flynn could have also set up for that was to maximize as much damage as possible so that we could have avoided the charge, but it, it, it depends on just how well you do, because of course he can just be a big lug and, you know, big bosses do, like him do mean we have to be very careful of not touching him by accident. So, Ready. welcome to the mid-boss. This is Colonel. We're going to fight him. If you're playing a Zero, the game completely removes this, instead giving you an anime cutscene. So, that is one of the benefits the that Zero mercy. has that makes his run faster by technicality than X. So, we actually have to face Colonel twice. Now, his iframes are a bit special. You're noticing that Flynn can get some extra hits whenever he spawns in from a teleportation or is finishing an animation. So we try to make use of that period whenever we can. He is weak to Frost Tower, but in the any percent run, we actually opt to do Frost Walrus in the second half, instead making use of getting the early body piece for the Nova Strike. I was salty though, I'll say that. Very salty at like how many extra cutscenes Zero got compared to X. <laughs> and don't even get me started on the fact that you only see him twice and only hear him twice in the entire game. Yeah, it's weird. This game, despite being called X4, feels a lot more catered to Zero's story. X's is, is still a generalistic plot that works for his needs and whatnot, but it feels as though there was a lot more impact put into what was going on for Zero. See, folks, you gotta realize that this game came out well before Extreme 2. So even then, before Iris got a second appearance, this game was her only appearance, and she's a pretty important character to Zero's history. I won't spoil what exactly, but ooh! Tragic, uh, tragic back diet, bike death. I love to you call the stage F. I, lo I love to call the stage F Zero Stingray for a reason. You know what? Heck yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we can talk about the ride chaser, Wolf. If you'd like to take over for me. Oh goodness, I 
Uh, pretty sure this is the Adion. Uh, personally, my favorite would be the Cheval, which is the Land Chaser from X2. Uh, but this is the Adion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is Jet Stingray stage. His entire stage is nothing but Land Chaser. So, uh, Flynn's gotta do some pretty exact jumps. It looks like he made it this time. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Uh, and now we go into the second half of the stage. And this will not be like Frost Walrus. I think Frost Walrus is the only one where the theme changes for the second half. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but now we're above water and not going through the caverns. And this time we actually have to beat up a little bit on Jet Stingray. I don't think this affects the boss fight this much. It just goes and he keeps dropping bombs and stuff on X or Zero, whoever you're playing, to uh, deter them from continuing. And so effectively, you just gotta kind of get him out of the way so he doesn't possibly cause you to lose a life or something. Because, as you already saw, if Flynn hits something the wrong way, he will die. Yep, got the sub take. Good job. And made it. I have a bit of a beginner-friendly way of trying to collect that sub tank because otherwise it can be easy to miss that one, especially when you got to position your uh, ride chaser uh, just right. So yeah, it's it, needless to say, F Zero Stingray for the fact that this auto scroller auto stinks. But <laughs> uh, you're welcome. I just came up with that on the spot. <laughs> so this is F Stingray. Appreciate that. And he is known for being the hype man. Shout out to my buddy Ultra Uberness, a top runner of this game, who has an emote literally dedicated to the fact that he goes, yeah! So we don't want him to do that early. He, we prefer him to mostly stick to that when he finishes doing an attack and just stays in the air. We can also hit him with Frost Shield from Frost Walrus. However, the iframes that he gets from being hit once afterwards is way too long. A good analogy to this is how runners from X1 don't usually hit Chill Penguin with his weakness Fire Wave for that same reason, so busters are a bit more preferred here. And now we've got his weapon, Ground Hunter, which will be especially useful for our next beast of a, of a bot slash beast. And uh, folks, I like trains. Now we cannot suplex this train. Let me just get that out of the way now. We cannot suplex it. X and Zero do not... X and Zero do not know wrestling moves, to my knowledge, so there will be no suplexing this train. Uh, also, all land chasers have names. I'm just, I've got Chad up on the side. Uh, Nick Soul, I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong, but all land chasers have so It's like, it, it's like a car. Make a model. It's like, we have the Cheval, we have the Adion. I don't know what the other ones are called, but they all have a name. And this is why I love having Wolfie on the comms, because she knows a lot more than even a guy like me would, so... <laughs> I didn't even she's, know the right, she's the right name. Yeah, I just learned something new, literally. Like, my, my point exactly. Props to you, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to brag, but I don't, like, the, the Maverick Hunter Field Guide that was written, uh, that was written by Red Draco and Black Draco, and I've been friends with them since IRC days. I grew uh, up in this fandom. Same. Battle Network was my gateway, but it wasn't long before I discovered Classic and then X. All right, oh, no, so no, I, I was born in 1980, so like I grew up a classic, and then uh, X came along. It's like it's the Squidward meme. Oh no, he's hot. <laughs> uh, we okay. love it. Okay, so nothing really special that that happened in in, in the train. Like you saw the dudes blow up the the connection between the the, the cars, but I, but I don't really major. The real thing about the first part of the stage, at least. And even the, the second one, to an extent, is that the train is, is kind of on a cycle. So you're trying to go as fast as you can to catch the best load cycle to load up the next part of the stage. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get it, but, well, don't matter. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where it's similar to the Super Mario Brothers frame analogy of waiting for a bus, so... Yeah, it, it's not the easiest to figure out if you're just getting used to the whole stage movement, but yeah, if, if you know a thing or two about how to manage your time going through Area 1, then if you hit it, you're pretty much good to go. Otherwise, yeah, you, you get the idea. So now we move into Slash Beast. Uh, but, you, uh, well, you're going to say Wolf? I was just going to say it before Summoning Salt finally does a video on the next game. Oh, that would be amazing. I, I would love to see that. All right, so yeah, 
Beast has a very unique intro animation where he does a little Sonic the Hedgehog-like running. Shout out to Yato for that one. And yeah, he just gets on the train. When we see him in the boss refight, he's just going to drop from the ceiling. Also, this is our uh, <laughs> this is a clear-cut case of stun lock right here. Spark Mandrel Syndrome is wearing on this guy like no tomorrow. And also, with the charge shot variant, if Len hits up or down once firing it, the Ground Hunter will shoot some extra projectiles in the vertical directions. It's a pretty unique move overall. Now, we got Twin Slasher. I will say, Slash Beast's fight is a bit more challenging when you play Zero. The reason for this is because his techniques are not entirely based on attack moves, unlike other games. In his case, some of the things he gets are very functional stuff, like the ability to double jump or making his saber a bit stronger and turning it purple and the ability to do an air dash. So some of the weaknesses with the Mavericks in Zero's run are completely different, and some of them do not have those weakness reactions. If I recall correctly, Capcom made it so that Web Spider's equivalent for Zero is the best to use on Slash Beast, but unlike Ground Hunter, he does not get stunned for it. And also, when Ground Hunter hits Beast for the first time, you'll also notice he loses his toe claws, and thus he can only fire one of his slasher waves when he does the flip kick, whereas if those were still there, he can do two. It's a bit of a clear-cut throwback to how in uh, Mega Man X1 and consequentially Extreme 2, you can take care of Launch Octopus's tentacles, and in X1's case, Flame Mammoth's trunk. So now Here, okay, I'm trying to go through my Maverick Hunter field guide, trying to find the name for the other land chasers so I can tell you guys what they are. Uh, don't worry about it. Take your time, friendo. But now we can at least talk about the uh, Nova Strike. So if you would like to go ahead and cover that, Wolfie. Oh, goodness. Okay, the Nova Strike. Uh, pretty much probably one of X's most powerful attacks ever, bar none. Uh, for... Now, Flynn didn't get the ultimate armor for this run. Uh, I'm definitely more... Uh, what would be the terminology here? I would be more versed in uh, ultimate armor. Um, because I tend to run that when I'm playing this game. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, like, for the Nova Strike, uh, X effectively kind of just... It's like it goes... Decides to become a football linebacker and uh, decides he's just gonna tackle into people. Uh, he's got an energy shield that goes along with it, and, of course, that means that not only is he charging into you at full speed, but he's also blasting you somehow with it as well. So, definitely not anything. It's a very good move to get enemies out of your way really fast. And, like, if you have the ultimate armor, it's like you have that indefinitely. I think in this one, it's kind of like with the Giga Crush. You kind of got to charge it up a little bit before you can use it. So Yeah, you can only yeah, use the... it once, but then you got to take damage to recharge it. Okay, yep, so it's like the Giga Crush in X2. Okay. I'm going to explain more about the benefits of that in a bit, but right now we just saw Flynn pull off a superb trick that X gets vesting Zero at this. So Zero has to fight that mini boss, and as you can see right there, that's a spike floor under it, so if you fall into that, you're dead. Unfortunately, the boss will only become vulnerable once it charges up by picking a platform and then destroying it, so you're very limited on real estate and it can be casually harrowing. But in X's case, by skipping over the camera trigger, using the rising upper, and then followed by a Nova Strike, we can just move into the Area 2 trigger and not have to take care of that boss at all. And now, we gotta get this life up right up there. Don't blink, and don't miss it, but also, we just move on forward. So, the Nova Strike, how it charges up is indeed similar to Giga Crush in that X will gain more energy when he takes damage. The difference that makes Nova Strike a lot more effective is he will also gain energy for any health pickups he picks. So this also includes using your sub tank in the menu. Anytime he heals, basically that also counts as energy for the Nova Strike, and so it's pretty easy to charge up all things considered. That said, a big advantage that the Ultimate Armors category has in this stage is you notice in those revolving stair sections, the fastest way to get up those actually does involve Nova striking up there, there constantly. And nicely done. So now Flynn is going to show a fun little camera trick where he's going to go all the way up to the boss arena and before the elevator stops, 
There we go. We are now right next to where the boss will spawn, and we got him right in our sights. This is Split Mushroom, or as I like to call Car Ranger Dapu Mushroom, because his voice actress in the Japanese uh, cast is the same as the Sent Super Sentai series that became Power Rangers Turbo. And I really wish her uh, she went and did a lot more voice roles even to this day, because I imagine she's still around. It doesn't seem like she's done a lot ever since, though, and this is easily one thing I remember her for, because listen to Split Mushroom, listen to Dapu, you'll hear the resemblance. But overall, Web Spider's Weapon is another Spark Mandrel Syndrome, quite unshockingly, literally. And, well, it's also handy to use the Nova Strike on Mushroom as well. Pretty simple boss once you get the whole strat down. Otherwise, he's a uh, Gemini Man, but plant-like and electricity, something like that. He's like if uh, Gemini Man and... There is a new strat. That, that is, there's a faster new strat. I'll say. There's a faster new strat for uh, Split Mushroom. But uh, it's really hard. So we're just taking... So we're just taking with, uh, with baby Makes strats. Sense. You were going to say... Well, not, mar <laughs> not marathon safe, effectively. So uh, I found the rest of the land chasers, though, for those of us that wanted to hear that part. So oh, let's hear it. The, the Adions, of course, are the ones from X4. The ones that we saw the Rebel Force uh, using were mo illegally modified Adions called Hornets. Uh, the one that uh, Mexel and Chat had mentioned from uh, X8, that's called your various model. And then there's also Kelpie and Sirius models that are in X8. Uh, Central White is the Kelpie, and then Sirius is the one that you use during Mana War that flies around. So, And then there's some unidentified model. They didn't give it a name for X7. Interesting. I was actually about to ask about X7, because I am learning that speedrun as of recent, so... <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Oh, trust me, it's all right. It's perfectly fine. And uh, speaking of fine, we don't have fire. So let's instead talk about Cyber Peacock, which will be our final Maverick. Funnily enough, roll reversed in the ultimate armor category. So the ultimate armor category, because we want to get the ultimate armor as fast as we can, once you input the code, any capsule that you get X into will give you your reward. Now, some runners used to use Web Spider because his leg capsule, the leg armor parts, were literally right there. However, Dante also was one of the people that would do Cyber Peacock stage because this is literally just a speedrun stage. You noticed Flynn got S ranks all across the board. If you notice the hurry up text though, you, that's your cue to speed things up before you get a rank down. You'll still pass the stage if you get an A rank. If you get a B rank though, you have to do it all over again. And, yeah, that's all there really is to it. Now, in Zero's case, because he does not get the armor unlike Extreme 2, you don't really have to worry about that S rank. We still do it for speed, but, like, he just gets an extra life, and that's it. So, yeah, and this is the gravity puzzle. We just needed to flip those balls, have them roll across the ramps, and eventually hit those little, uh, those little cyber platforms. And so now, here's Peacock. You'll want to pay attention to his boss HP bar, by the way, because you might have noticed that in previous bosses, some of them had the Repliforce icon, but look closely at his. He's one of three that has it a little differently. Where have I seen that before, though? Can't put my finger on it. Hmm. Hey, it looks like somebody is buddies with a certain Baldy. Hmm. A Baldy McNose hair, I'd wager. We used to call him something else in the roleplay club, but uh, that would be uh, a little bit of a swear, and I don't think I should be saying that on the street. Uh, that's probably for the better. So, you're <laughs> noticing that Cyber Peacock has a few different moves to utilize, and we try to hit him when appropriate with Soul Body, because that gets him in another stun. If we can hit him with some charge shots, though, that's also favorable as well. And that's all of the eight Mavericks. So, really quick. We are going into the post game. The stages here are generally shorter than any other post game in any X game for that matter. Spaceport is well received though. For one, it has some pretty good platforming challenge to it. And then, you know, once that's done, that's basically it. Just fight the boss, that's that. And so we're gonna be fighting Colonel for the second time. One benefit to using the Nova Strike if we manage to use the aforementioned uh, knowledge to his iframes is it will hit him several times. 
So we can technically do that here, but the difference between fighting him in Spaceport over the Memorial Hall is there are physical walls here, and if the Nova Strike hits physical walls, it will stop. In the Memorial Hall, however, it's a non-solid, solid collision, an invisible collision. So in that case, it keeps going. So Flood will probably try to use that here, but there's also a chance that it could potentially just bump into the wall and there's not much else to it. Aside from that, though, we got a few extra moves from Colonel, Energy Breaker and Ground Crush. Enjoy his voice acting if you can, but aside from that, I think we should pass it on over to the host. So Pro, all yours. I'm here. Hi. I got lost watching this run. Sorry. Hi. Hi. No, oh, uh, hi. Uh, uh, yeah. I want to tell you about something that just opened up. We're still working towards that blindfold run for Melatonin, as well as the 100% uh, upgrade for Doronko Wonko. But there's a game after both of those called Mirror's Edge. Some people may have heard of this game. Uh, but we have opened up a custom time trial showcase target that we are currently cu currently trying to achieve and that is fifty dollars so it's all doable remember it's complete a thon not some of it thon we want to hit all these incentives there's not a lot of time left so you got to get those donations in and make sure when you do you click on the target you click on the bid work because we still have the sims 4 opened up between the male and female main body type and female is currently leading with 25 dollars so if you want to see that change get your donations in All right. All right. Thank you so much. So now we are in the final weapon, which will be the centerpiece for our last levels of the late game. And this is probably the shortest one of them all. We now have to fight double. This boss will differ between whoever's campaign you play as. So wait. I'm so anxious to rip you <laughs> I was apart. I was wondering if he was going to do that Half one. Line. Uh, that's, that's some delivery right there. Uh, yeah, so Double is X's specific boss. Unfortunately, Zero will have to fight Iris. But the difference here is that Double, his body will create those little drones whenever you hit him with his weakness, the Double Cyclone from Storm Owl. So it is a bit more efficient to take body checks from him instead. Or actually, no, body checks from the drones, excuse me. And that's how we try to keep ourselves close to him as humanly possible. But otherwise, it is fairly easy to accidentally die to there. And also, you saw that Flynn did use his Nova Strike to just simply get across the room, which, you know, optimal, but also takes away the ability to use the Nova Strike during the earlier part of the fight. So now we have a split path section, a top route and a bottom route. Most people... Oh! Okay. Okay, oh, game. I'm close. not going there again. That, that was, that was rude. Excellent save, Flynn. In Midwest Beef Fest, in Midwest Beef Fest, I died there. I'm not dying there again. I, I should know, I, I, would, I would miss that. <laughs> so only I did oh, not, right. have, uh, I'm glad that I got to see you save it this time, buddy. Folks, pay attention to the text box. You just noticed for a split frame <laughs> that General's name had General. They Show forgot to put an E power. in one of the headers, and it is a funny one at that. So this is General. He is the leader of the Repla Force, and he did not do my favorite quote, but that's perfectly fine, because at this point we could mention the big difference between playing on English and Japanese. You'll notice that bosses, some of them have voice lines before the fight starts. In the Japanese release, all of them except Eregion do. And thus, the line that they choose to use is random. And so, Japanese version may save time over text, which, by the way, you have to mash through instead of holding the start button like the Super Nintendo games let you. But, yeah, the, the dialogue is easily a huger time save in that it just completely gets removed for bosses that were not simply dubbed. Why the Capcom team decided to exclude this, on the other hand, is beyond me. Fun fact, though, if you happen to play Rockman X4, the JP version, You'll notice that Web Spider and Cyber Peacock, they're the same person. Not sure why, it's the only time that this game does this. And speaking of Web Spider, here's the refights. Huh, We're gonna funny. do something a little different. I'm gonna let Flynn here's focus on this one because this trick will use the Nova Strike. Yes, please. But just watch carefully, and if we get it, it's gonna be awesome. 
So series time until then. Whoa! Okay, got, kinda got it. But uh, unfortunately, yeah. I missed that the, the first That was still impressive. Shot. That was still impressive. So, it like okay. I said, when Web Spider gets from above the ceiling, he's still technically vulnerable. He's just warping to a different position before he drops back in. And the Nova Strike, when used this way, especially after landing a preemptive hit before he gets back to the ceiling, really tears his health apart. If Fled did that perfectly, he could have skipped the entire animation leading into that phase two. But on top of that, there's also a slight chance he could have glitched out the health bar and caused it to reach a negative value, which then would have had the entire health bar just suddenly fill up beyond the sprite border. It's, it's the funniest thing. And now we're back to Dragoon. So the overall idea of this free fight is now we use double cyclone on him as well as the stockbuster shots. You'd probably be feeling a bit more familiar to this if you've seen an any percent run. The funny part is that while 100% is considered faster, the two of them are not all that far apart in terms of world records. Another optimization that I did forget to mention in Cyber Peacock stage is that Dante, in his world record, completely negates the helmet upgrade. We have to collect it here though, and that's good because that thing, why wouldn't you want to have it? It makes it so that anytime you used an uncharged special weapon, you have unlimited ammo. You will still waste it though if it's charged. All right, back to Storm L. We're gonna see a easier version of the shield break right there, and that's especially made possible thanks to aiming laser from Cyber Peacock. And uh, also, fun fact, despite the fact that Flynn is stationary, he can press up and down and the reticle will still move. It's, 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 it's just funny. It's just funny that way. The big downside of this weapon, though, is that once it does lock onto a target, it's stuck and you can't change weapons unless you go into the pause menu or you unlock from the target by just going far away. It's a little bit annoying that way. Back to Frost Walrus. We're basically going through the rest of the boss fights as they were before. So I'd say we can pass it on back to Pro. If you had any announcements or anything you would like to read, now's the time to do so until we get to the final teleporter. This time I wasn't staring at a wall. I'm actually here. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to remind everybody on what we are fundraising for and what we're gonna be doing over the next four days. This is in support of Girls Make Games. In 2014, Girls Make Games was founded in order to provide girls with the space and resources to explore the world of gaming and help them pursue careers in game development. Girls Make Games has helped their alumni go on to graduate high school, college, and on to jobs in the gaming industry and wider STEAM fields. With help through your donations, the Girl Make Games Scholarship Fund will give women and girls the support they need to reach their fullest potential. We're doing really well so far with the $200 that we have raised. I look forward to us completing the marathon and beyond, working towards that $2,000 goal. As a reminder, you got a lot of bid war. You got a bid war. You got a lot of targets to be aiming for. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all I'm gonna leave you with for now. I, I, go us. You're doing great, Flynn. By the way, this runs awesome. <laughs> yeah, Flynn is very consistent with playing X4. Yeah, just a really, very talented runner. And let's not forget, folks, that's this isn't the only run that Flynn is going to be doing. Stay tuned later on for Devil May Cry. Shout out to our DMC friendos of that community. So that's going to be extra cool to watch as well. Definitely don't miss it. And I wish that we could have like a, like a, like a, like, like somebody mods one of them to get, make a, now that we have like the, the Dante and Virgil armors that we got from Die for X and Zero. Like, uh, yes. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. And for those curious, Mega Man X Dive, which sadly did, the global version did go offline as of late last month, uh, it had a couple of special crossovers to its name, Devil May Cry and Monster Hunter being a couple. And whenever those were celebrated, some of the characters, usually X or Zero, would get some special uh, crossover-related armors. And yeah, those were cool. Uh, you can play the game still because they did release an offline version through Steam and mobile. However, you do have to get the Steam version in order to be able to mod those in because the data for those characters are still there, just not legally obtainable otherwise. So back to Jet Stingray. Again, same fight as before. 
and we prefer not to hit him with his weakness. Also, the water is green. We are now in Nickelodeon slime, I guess. Double dare? Double dare, anyone? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm more Kids' Choice Awards than Double Dare. <laughs> or oh, no, that, yeah. was, that, that was the first thing I remember slime from was Double Dare. Uh, I guess there was Legends of the Hidden Temple. That Not the slime, just more my casual experience. Oh, yeah, 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 that, that too. <laughs> Nick got paid, that was another one. Oh, yeah. that I, I recently heard about that. I was not aware for the longest time, but a friend, uh, it was a friend, uh, I think shout outs to my friend Smash Whammy that first told me about this one. All right, so we are now in our final refight, so we're back to Cyber Peacock. Once we defeat him, it'll be on to the Sigma fight. Now, good news, no flashing lights warning this time. Uh, this time, though, we've got three phases of Sigma coming up, so... What you're going to see Flynn start off with once we get there is the Reaper phase, the, the Grim Reaper. I want to say big, big shoutouts to the animators behind the anime cutscenes from the once amazing studio of Studio Jebek, Z-E-B-E-C. If you look up their credits, unfortunately they closed down back in 2019, but this and Mega Man 8 were the first of many contributions they did to Mega Man anime related stuff including the Battle Network and Star Force animes that I grew up with and was what got me into the franchise. So I really owe it to them for stuff like this and that and over there too. Like, they were pretty dedicated to doing all sorts of Mega Man stuff, even a music video of some band doing an awesome cover of the X vs. Zero theme from X5. Really? So, whoa, 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 whoa. That's news to me. Hold up. So this is the anime cutscenes for this game are an, an X and Mega Man 8 2 then, obviously, uh, by the same studio that did the Battle Network anime? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, because they're the same people who did uh, Day of Sigma. That's true. I know, yeah. that, for, I know that for a fact, because um, my friend, uh, I call her Sai, but um, she goes by different names online now, but uh, she... Uh, She's the one who sent um, somebody else that I know Tempest knows of, Sean. Uh, she sent Sean all those Sentai sheets of the of the characters from the EXE and included in them was some of the Day of Sigma stuff because it was the same animation house. And I like Sean bugged me in DMs. He's like, no, you have to look at this. Like, I know about those. She told me about those. She told me she sent them to you. I know you have them. <laughs> you guys are real guys. I is this a, is it, just to make sure we're on the same page? Is this a certain Sean that also ends with Omega? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Shout out to Sean Ch Sean Chiplock, voice actor for yeah. Revali. He is just a huge Mega Man fan, and we even get to be the uh, English voice of Gunvolt, a a very uh, Mega Man Zero inspired franchise by the same developers of those games. But enough yeah. talk, we now have to get into our final Sigma fight. You saw earlier that Flynn had to hit Reaper with the Rising Upper, and then it was all about using Web Spider and Nova Strike on the, re uh, the Cloakless phase. Now we have technically two fights in one. That was Gunner Sigma, and that weakness was Soul Body. The Ground Ugly Head Sigma is Ground Hunter, and the attack we mostly want to see him using is the blow away one instead of this one where he's sucking you in because that just deals a lot more ungodly damage and yeah i do not blame you for using the sub tank on that one at all i think this name is called tell sigma no, no, i, I think no, yeah, now, is, okay uh, there are too many versions of sigma trust me it's just sigma 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 i swear they they could have uh, okay, I mean, I guess if you're tired of Sigma, play X8. You'll see why. Uh, and with that, we have defeated the final boss. Time will be once Flynn loses control of X, which will happen in the next room. So get ready in just a few seconds. I'm just glad we didn't get the ended because Sigma can do that attack with Oh, the God, end. I hated that and move. Time, time. GG. I will say it, the way he <laughs> says the end in English is a lot more hilarious, and yet in Japanese it's a lot more serious, because when he says the end, it's more Awarida! So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a great run, Flynn. Good job. The uh, only because... cutscene. Aside from oh, that, that, go ahead, yeah, Flynn, that sorry. Was... That was a pretty solid run, if I do 
piss on myself getting saved from the uh ah, also, right. 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 solid yeah, solid funny. run but yeah that cutscene is <laughs> literally the only cutscene in the entire game where you actually see x speaking with his mouth the entire game that's the only one it's so, like i got this game and i got to see him in two cutscenes the intro and then his own ending and that's it so, i was so salty <laughs> don't mind yeah. me and <laughs> girl ranting what don't mind me <laughs> <laughs> it is unfortunate because where Zero does have a conversation with X on that escape ship's monitor, uh, the same does not happen in his own story. So unfortunate, X does not even get a single mention in Zero's tale. But hey, this game is really, really cool. And once more, uh, before we get shout outs from Flynn out of the way, I do want to say join the Mega Man X speedrunning community Discord server. Again, we have a link to our community that you can always find readily available on the Mega Man RTA leaderboard site, as well as the other speedrunning communities as well. And there are quite a number of people who would be happy to teach you this game. I know my pal Ultra Uberness, shout out to that anime cutscene, that is his favorite. Uh, he is one of those people. I know we got Johnny Go and, uh, you know, Dante and all them. And... You, this game is very accessible. You can emulate the original. You can also play this on the Legacy Collection. Uh, do keep in mind that that has a separate leaderboard because of some uh, slight performance differences. But yeah, no matter which version uh, you play, even if it's the X Collection, we're happy to get you set up on this one. This is definitely my favorite PS1 X and for good reason. Yeah, this one is definitely the strongest of all of them. Also Trans Arts, shout out to Trans Rights. I say this, 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 this. Yeah, this game is it, it, pretty fun. I say it's the most speedrun friendly of the X series. My own personal opinion, because it's the one I, I started with. Yeah, so I may be a little bit biased, but whatever. Anyways, I want to thank everybody for having me here here today. But I'll be back on Friday. Like, like Tempest said, we'll be playing some Devil May Cry, all collectibles. That'll be fun. Where can you find me if you, if you want to find me? Um, Twitch.tv slash Flannels. Uh, F-L-E-N-N-I-L-S. I do a lot of speedruns, randomizers, and casual and casual playthroughs. Your local, also your local Metroid chill. Play Metroid, it's really good. <laughs> I want to speedrun Metroid too. Wolfie, where can they find you? It's a really fun series. Oh, um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, I'm at uh, Twitch.tv slash Wolfshadow6. Uh, I am a speedrunner as well, although right now uh, I've only been speedrunning Commodore 64 games. Uh, I am still trying to figure out what X game I want to pick up because this is my favorite series ever. I mean, I probably like this. I could be here for hours and I won't take up that much time, but I, I, I probably would not still be here if it were not for this series because it's been its impact has been that much. Like I have made almost my husband, some of my best friends, the people here. Uh, I, I've met all of these people through this one darn little blue robot. So, yeah, uh, I do a lot of Mega Man stuff. Uh, I also do art and stuff, but, you know, I'm also a speedrunner. I'm just trying to figure out what first X game I'm going to pick out. Absolutely. And my name is Tempest Mask 1000. You can find me under that tag for Twitch, YouTube, and you can also catch me on my Twitter for at its Tempest Steve and Blue Sky for Tempest Mask. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having us complete a thon. And folks, please, please, please keep raising money for Girls Make Games. Uh, girl game developers have brought us probably some of my favorite games. I know we got Celeste, for instance, one of the coolest, most accessible, difficult platformers out there, and just many, many more. Let's let's keep raising money for this wonderful charity. And uh, yeah, thank you for having us, Flynn. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you guys later, I suppose. What a fantastic Thanks. party. Thank you, everybody, for coming out for this. This was an awesome run. Lots of information and lots of lots of disappointment. We didn't get to see enough of that of that really hot robot. But don't worry, in Devil Mech Cry, we'll see more of them. <laughs> I've, I've wanted to say that all the time. I just didn't want to cut anybody off. But yeah. Thank you very much for joining us for that Mega Man X4 X 100% run.
You are watching Complete A Thon 2024. My name is Pro Pokenoob. In case you're coming in, hope you've been having a wonderful day. We have a $25 donation from Trainer Anade that simply says, now I don't actually know how to say this because I'm I'm new to this. This says less than three. I don't know if that if that's when I say heart or if it's ever spelled out for heart. I've never actually had someone drop a less than three donation for me to read, so. You know, I'm assuming this is less than three. Maybe people actually write out heart. I'm going to overcomplicate this just to just to bring up that that went towards the Duranko Wonko 100 percent upgrade to the category. Now, I have some information for you because we are leaving the X and O's behind and we're entering the S I L L Y's, the silly block. We got a lot of silly games coming up for you. Pull out your notepads because we're going to teach you how to be a tree. We're going to teach you how to be a Pomeranian. We got Barney coming up. We got a bunch of weird stuff happening. It's silly times. And one of those, to make it even more silly, is to get us to that Duranko Wonko 100% category update. You got about 30-ish, not even, like 25-ish minutes to make that happen. We're at 25 of the $75 required to make that happen, as well as we're at 50 of the $100 required for Melatonin, the all levels blindfolded category. I don't think I need to explain the blindfold and how fun the blindfold would actually be, because Blindfolded makes every speedrun infinitely better. And I want to see that. You want to see it because the runner can't. Get it? That was a blindfold joke. Anyways, uh, let me give you some information here on the Duranko Wonko 100% category upgrade. Not only does it you get to see extra content like a wild jump that covers a shocking distance, you get to pick up a special object to gain extra attack power as a Pomeranian. You get to chase a sleepwalking human around the house. And there's a super secret bonus secret. Super secret bonus secret. Let me say that one more time. Super secret bonus secret. There's a secret for a secret of a super secret. We need 70, we need 50 more dollars put towards the Duranko Wonko 100% because you want to see a super, but I want to see a super secret bonus secret. I'm sure you want to see a super secret bonus secret. And to convince you and to, and to lead you into our next set of games, I am going to now improvise, courtesy of Gerbo, um, I'm going to improvise something that I am going to dub the Ode to Finality, provided by thesaurus.com. Improvised, not written down. Let's make this happen. <clears throat> if I had a piano key to hit the starting tune to the Black Parade, I would, but I just pretend that I've, I've hit a piano key. Okay, we'll go, uh, bing. Here we go. The certitude and completeness of this marathon will be decisively and entirely finished by us, the community, because it is inevitable and intact due to our integrity and the perfection of the resolute and the totality of us being able to hit the donation goal and all of its incentives. And this is an unavoidable wholeness we will all embrace together. And now I will decidedly and irrevocably terminate this message. Thank you. I now just use every single thesaurus synonym for finality. I didn't mess that up. Love it. Good job. Hi I'll high five for you, chat. Here we go. Done. But yeah, we're getting ready for How to Be a Tree with Corey. All endings. I don't know how many endings there are to being a tree. We're about to find out, you know, sometimes. Sometimes I sit on my... I, I, my parents have a lovely pine tree in their backyard. And sometimes I sit on my bed and I look out the window and I stare at that pine tree. It's gone through a lot of stuff. It's a really old tree. And, and for some reason, I'm leaning on the... Like, I'm doing the whole bartending thing where I have my arm and I'm wiping off my desk. There's nothing on the desk. But I stare at that pine tree and I go, you know, sometimes I wish I knew how to be a tree. Trees have it easy, kind of. They keep the world alive. They're they're very helpful. They're very awesome. They're they're daunting. They're tall. Right? That thing ever falls. My house, my, my tiny little house is just going to go smoosh. But I'll be happy because, you know, sometimes you think about what if I was a tree? And I think this next game is going to help us with that. So, you know, while we're figuring out how to be a tree, make sure you're getting those donations in. We want to see the Duranko Wonko upgrade. We want to see the melatonin blindfold. We want to see Mirror's Edge Custom Trial Showcase. We want to support because we actually do have more support that came in for that bid war between the male and female main sim body type. Now the female body's up to $50 and the male body's at $25. So the female body still leading. If you want to see that change, it is in your hands to make that happen.
Okay, apparently I've missed some donations. When did the number go up and why didn't I see this? Uh, not only do we have a $10 anonymous donation towards the melatonin all levels blindfolded category, we have a $50 donation, uh, big fi I was gonna say something, I lost it. From Suave Peanut. Thank you very much, and I believe, if I can do math, 25 plus 50 equals 75. I tutor children in math. That should equal 100% for the 100% category for Daronko Wonko. You will not regret it. Thank you for making that happen. We will now chase a sleepwalking human and discover what a super secret, super boss secret thing. That is awesome. Thank you so much for making that happen. Bringing our total to $285. Also, oh, what did that do for the Sims? Oh, the female's body's up to $100 now. Heavily overshadowing the male main Sim body type. There's still time to make that happen. That's after, I believe, the melatonin. I gotta look at the schedule. That's after the melatonin? That's before the melatonin. So not as much time, but you still have a good amount of time because we're gonna be spending a lot of our time learning how to be a tree and then watching Barney play hide and seek and all this other cool stuff that's gonna be coming up.